Hello, Namaste. Welcome back to the course on Geographic Information System. Uh, today, I am here back with, uh, as I said, I would speak about the Open uh, Geospatial Consortium or uh, where, uh, I mean, uh, it is also called as Open Source Geospatial Consortium. Uh, so, this OGC and OGC standards are the, are the standards that are much referred. So, whatever we spoke about the standardization in our previous class, uh, OGC is one consortium which actually is responsible for developing of standardization. So, we look at more of it, how it evolved as an organization, how uh, now for example, when we look at OGC, what are its domains, what are its standards, what are the structure of that particular organization. How can, how can one be a member of that particular organization and how can the collaboration of uh, a particular standardization can happen uh, through OGC. So, whenever, when we say open geospatial consortium, it is an international voluntary consensus standard organization as I said previously was established in 1994. In OGC, we have at least 500 commercial, governmental, non-profit and research organization worldwide that collaborate in a consensus process encouraging development and implementation of open standards. Okay. So, I am not speaking here with open source. So, I am speaking about open standards. Okay. So, please keep that in mind in quotes open standards. So, OGC is member driven consensus process create royalty free. So, there is no royalty for this publicly available open geospatial standards. So, whenever whenever this are uh, there is a new geospatial standards that is involved, it is always publicly available and are royalty free. Okay. So, it is normally created by the uh, organizations or those organizations which collaborate worldwide and encourage in development of open standards. So, when you are looking at uh, open, space, uh, open geospatial consortium, so now uh, uh, vision, the main vision when we look at is for example, let us say using location. If you have a particular location, what it says is we can connect people of that particular location, communities, maybe across communities, across locations, across technologies and decision making to create a sustainable uh, future which means to say that whenever you create a data, okay, I create a data, there is someone else who will create a data, maybe Mr. Chandan creates a data, there is a Mr. Prakash P.S. who creates a data. So, if this data is in a proper shape, in a proper standard, in a proper tech, using a proper technology, so the decision making would become extremely easy, okay. It can cross barriers and define decisions which can be easily interpreted even uh, without uh, even without looking at what kind of uh, I mean decision is actually being reviewed without having any influence of any any other uh, intellectuals or any other uh, uh, influential attributes in terms of uh, data that you have. Okay. So, it is very essential in order to connect people, it is very essential in order to uh, connect communities it is very essential in order to develop technologies which address these issues and will help in creating a sustainable future for us or any children and the future generations. That is what is the main vision which means that the data that is serving us today will be also the serving point in the future. So, very important thing is that we have to create data which is future usable and for example, if someone asks you can you give me a data of land use of 1950, it may be extremely, uh, I, I mean we, we may not have any uh, uh, data records. Though we have uh, government records, it is extremely difficult in order to digitize those government records and exactly put it on a spatial surface. So, it is very important today if we have created a particular data standard, created particular data, even after 20, 30 years this particular data can be used for any looking at any temporal decisions, temporal change decisions that has to be taken by any of the policy makers. So, it is extremely important in order to create a good standard data and the data that can be used by many. Then when you look at the mission of Open Geospatial Consortium, it is to serve the global forum for making location findable, please be very careful here, the location is very specific, location findable, accessible, 
interoperable when i say interoperable it is between the data and the data standard and reusable okay via of proven consensus based collaborative and agile process so why do i mention it as agile is the process that where it when whenever we have a collaborative and a consensus based process always the uh, whatever the uh, hand holding happens it is through agile process it's quite agile in terms of how the process happens and when you are looking at combining standards and innovation and partnership it is uh, extremely agile so that's why uh, when you are looking at all of these there should be striking balance otherwise you know uh, once uh, if you don't have a striking balance either the data quality would go low or the production quality would go low so one of these would surely misbalance in terms of uh, how you create uh, data and data uh, and uh, uh, process it now once we have understood this we have certain domains that uh, ogc actually conforms to so it uh, it means to say that there are different domains where ogc uh, has its own ways of interpreting data for example it's aviation you have built environment and 3d okay 3d of built environment is extremely important in today's context whether it is application of natural resource management or whether it is uh, usage of uh, in terms of development of certain scenarios for how we can use a renewable energy or it is with your with applications towards how improvement can be done to the cities in terms of whatever the uh, program of government of india like the smart city mission or any of those such uh, uh, missions that are there then all of this in today's context the 3d becomes a very very important aspects for any city and city information so if you if you can follow that how that particular 3d information is extracted through the ogc standards then it would be much easier for you to represent that data then the business intelligence extremely uh, important in terms of gis defense and intelligence is uh, also gone uh, through ogc standards then you have uh, emergency response and disaster management yes uh, though it is not existent as, as of now in india much but yes it is growing up uh, that uh, you could uh, probably see the yearbook of uh, disaster uh, disaster management that was released uh, by the, the minister uh, just about few months before so you could see uh, there are also the mention of uh, different standards then you have energy and utilities then you have geoscience and environment so th this is where the major uh, applications of standardization has been seen over a period over few years government and spatial data infrastructure the spatial data infrastructure is the concept that is actually coming up in a large way so the spatial data infra if if you, if that has to be created then the pool of data has to be uh, interacting with each other if the pool of data has to be interacting with each other it means to say that the data has to be standardized data has to have its own location has to know what it is where it is what kind of data is stored only then you will be able to make the data interactive in that entire pool and then develop the special data infrastructure then the mobile internet and location services what kind of location services are there what is the mobile internet service how it how, how the services are tendered to the users also is governed by ogc then you have sensor webs universities and research are also uh, where the data is used o uh, the ogc also forms its own domain of how it has to be represented okay so when you are looking at this uh, normally when you look at ogc standards uh, ba the baseline comprises at least of more than 30 standards as of today so that includes first one is the csw which is catalog service for web this is uh, accessing the catalog information uh, through the web services then gml today if you look at uh, the web based services gml uh, marks up a very good uh, very important way of how the data is captured geographically so ge geography markup language the xml format based geographic information uh, is one of those uh, ogc standards that are used then geo xml or xml is geospatial extensible access control markup language then you have kml very well known uh, Go uh, google earth uses the kml language that is a keyhole markup language this basically an xml based language schema for expressing geographic annotations and visualization of existing web based 
uh, two dimensional maps and three dimensional earth resources that's uh, that is exactly why it is used uh, in uh, google earth so observations and measurements these are uh, other parts of uh, the standard baseline then you have ogc reference manual model so as i said whenever you create something you have a reference model so ogc also has a complete set of reference models for it to be uh, for it to be very clearly implemented then we have o ols that is open location service where uh, which helps us uh, in servicing the locational data for uh, for any kind of emergency responses then uh, we have ogc web, uh, web service context document that defines application state of an ogc integrated client which means uh, there is a client it may be a browser so you have an ogc integrated browser then it it should it also should define how the application state is being mentioned so that is through the ogc web service then you have ows which is again ogc web service common so this is also very important now it's taking a uh, huge st uh, step in and more uh, there have been uh, implementation which has seen all across the globe then you have sos which is sensor observation service how how the sensors are organized uh, uh, are observed and uh, how it is implemented then you have sps the sensor planning service and the sensor ml which is a sensor model language so these these are few of the examples that can be stated so when you are looking at uh, another thing is very important is sensor things api so this is an open and a unified framework to interconnect iot devices data and applications over web so this forms a very important aspects uh, aspect in uh, today's context now today whatever is happening is through api and iot so if uh, if sensor things api is implemented then an open and unified framework can be easily developed then uh, uh, then you have uh, two candidates for example simple features like sql and the stylized the uh, later descriptors so these are other two formats but sensor things api is actually uh, uh, waiting awaiting uh, to be standardized so it is yet not a standard but it is awaiting st to be standardized if it is standardized then it becomes a thing uh, that can be easily implemented as a standard platform all across everyone can easily implement uh, how the iot uh, or, or how the internet of things uh, interact over the web with the user so that that will be quite standardized uh, as of today it is not very standardized but yes it is being implemented all over and so this is about the stand uh, different uh, standard and when you uh, look at other standards you have srid and identification of spatial coordinate systems so this srid also came into effect very recently so it helps in identifying the coordinate systems and you have water ml which is information model for representation of hydrological observation data so very specific thing so wcs is a web coverage service and wcps is a web coverage processing service this provides a raster query language for an ad hoc processing and filtering on raster coverages so when you are looking at certain things so you have to look at very specific for example there is wf wfs edge feature service it is for retrieving and altering feature descriptions so for example when you have your data represented on the web when if you put it as a web feature service it's a feature okay so you can uh, any user can download that feature so it has to be standardized certain standard way of using that feature also there are certain standards written by, uh, for wfs so that has to be uh, used in order to represent it as a wfs feature so all these are uh, extremely important when you have to put out the standardization then you have wms which is web map service that provides map images then you have wmts which is web map tile service that provides map tile uh, map uh, image tiles you have wps which is web processing service the remote processing services that are uh, normally there then geosparkql which is geographical spark uh, sparkql protocol and rdf query language that is representation of an querying of a geospatial data for semantic webs so that uh, that can be used and there is wts which is a web terrain service so all of these form different formats of standardization okay including uh, uh, the one awaiting standard so we can have about 31 standard uh, ways of representing the data so uh, when we look at data data representation this is what uh, is the necessity of the hour but 
when you are looking at there are certain baselines and the reference model that has to be mentioned. For example, uh, when you are developing a web service application, so you have to use an OGC uh, standards so that you understand the relationship between the OGC, OGC standards and how you actually uh, publish the data. If you do not understand the standardization and the, uh, and the data representation publishing, so you will not be able to represent a web service in a more flexible way. Okay? So, this uh, is through application of web services environment. So, the thing is that we have publish, find and bind. Publish is resource providers advise their uh, resources. So, then you find that is then end users and their application can discover resources and bind. You bind the end users and their application that can uh, that can access and exercise resources and run time. So, that is how the OGC baseline and the OGC reference model is actually uh, built. So, when we look at this, this gives uh, this is uh, from uh, live.osgo.org which actually gives you the entire uh, scheme of how uh, actually this particular uh, thing the whatever I spoke about in the previous slide happens. For example, you have the data that is actually created. Okay? We first create a data catalog and you create a style catalog and a service catalog. Then you have a client who will be looking at how you represent that particular data on the web service. Okay? So, this is then uh, represented through the encoding service. Both of these are represented through an encoding service. But before that when you start it, you will have to look at first is the data services which is either WCS, WFS or WCS, SOS. So, whatever kind of data service that is necessary. Once you have understood the data service, you have to see whether you are looking at data services, portrayal services or the processing services. If you are looking at processing services, then you have to look at WPS. If you are looking at portrayal services, then you will look at WMS. So, first select one of these services. Then once you have selected the services, your data should have a catalog. Once the catalog is created, then you will look at the client. What kind of client, whether it is a map viewer client, whether it is a imagery exploration client, whether it is a value added client, whether it is a SW client. So, you use certain clients to find out what is the application there. Then you bind this application through certain encoding. Okay? So, that encoding is it may be a GML, it may be service metadata, filtering encoding or a web map content. So, using this you will create the entire data service for that uh, or, or uh, create an uh, OGC IP interface for any of the web client that to be delivered. Okay, just, just, to, just an example for that. And when we look at the organization standards, uh, normally OGC has standards program that is technical committee and the planning committee work in a formal consensus process to arrive at a approval OGC standards. So, they have consensus for different uh, subcommittees, only then they will be able to uh, look at approved OGC standards. Then they have innovation program, a global innovation hands on prototyping and testing program that is basically designed to accelerate interface development and validation and bring interoperability. So, interoperability wherever you go interoperability you cannot miss. So, interoperability is very important in terms of whenever you create a GIS data. So, that is very important when you are looking at the market and then learn about different initiatives. So, that is where the innovation programs comes. Then you have compliance program. So, OGC compliance program, uh, program provides the resource, the procedure, the policy that will help in improving uh, software implementation compliance with OGC standards. Then you have community and outreach program. The OGC and its members offer resources to help technology developers and users take advantage of OGC's open standards. So, that is that is also extremely important and is actually gaining ground uh, very late. Uh, then as far as membership, OGC is an open membership organization. So, you can uh, anyone can have membership. The OGC offers a range of membership operation options for whether it is industry, whether it is government, whether it is academic, whether it is research and not to profit organization interested in supporting the consortium's global mission which is to develop data, I, data specifically in the standard format and the format that is easily transferable. So, 
that uh, that uh, yeah, the membership is available and this has various ways of looking at it if it is an industry stand industry membership it has various things to add to it if it's academic uh, membership then it, the way of the outlook is very different when it is a research membership then the outlook is quite different so depending on what kind of membership the outlook actually changes and the way it is uh, actually uh, uh, characterized is also very different so this is about membership then you have collaborations OGC has a uh, very close relations with ISO TC uh, 211 which is geographic information or geomatics then volumes from ISO 19100 so uh, international standardization of organization so uh, if you see the 19100 series is is uh, completely devoted to uh, OGC standards so this is actually under development but uh, I would say it has uh, over years has developed a uh, in fact developed a lot in terms of how the standardization has to be done. So, uh, the, uh, and uh, normally this OGC committee meets very often and they replace the OG, o, OGC abstract specification whenever it uh, the new specification has to be entered. Then you have uh, further the OGC standards web mapping service, GML web switcher service observation and measurements and simple feature access uh, this have become all have become my ISO standards if you look at if you just look at all of these they have specific ISO codes. So, these are different if you ISO is international standard of organization is an not an organization which actually awards you a certificate, but it is a voluntary service ok. So, ISO if I say it is ISO 19100 uh, certified it means say that certification is actually provided by a third party who actually uh, looks at uh, the organizational structure, uh, who looks at your data, who looks at how it is represented all of this once it is verified then uh, it is uh, it is uh, the certificate is provided. So, if someone says it is ISO certified it means that it is certified by a third party and not by the ISO, ISO only provides standards. It mentions what are the different ways that it has to be looked at to get the standardization otherwise ISO has no role in providing certifications ok. So, that is about uh, collaborations. So, when when we look at we looked at uh, the open space geo, uh, open geospatial uh, consortium OGC. So, we looked at how OGC works what are the different domains in it we have looked at 30 different domains how it works what are the different uh, ways that uh, you have to look at. Then we looked at OGC standards which is extremely important in terms of uh, representing the data then organizational structure or the membership and collaboration. So, this uh, is how an organization actually is uh, maintained. So, this is all about OGC in my uh, next uh, class uh, I will uh, also speak about uh, the NSDI. So, it is an Indian government initiative uh, to bring standardization in the data that is developed by uh, the Indian researchers, Indian organization, the government, the academia etcetera. So, we will look at that part in my next lecture. Until then have a nice time, thank you very much.